Hi, I'm Christopher Walker with Closely Observed Literature, and I'm going to talk about a book today by a writer from Brazil. So if you're hoping that it's Paulo Colo, you can stop listening now. If you're hoping it's not Paulo Colo, because like me, you think he's completely overrated and boring and stupid, then stick around because you'll be quite happy with what I talk about. I'm going to be talking about Marcio Souza's The Emperor of the Amazon. Now, I was lucky to get this. I found this in a second-hand bookshop in, uh, so it's Age UK. Yeah, I paid 99 pence for this. Um, I got this in Stirling in Scotland from a charity shop. And I picked it up because one of the students in the group I was teaching when I was over there doing a summer school was from Brazil. And not wanting to mention Colo, I couldn't think of any Brazilian writers that I could kind of name drop to impress her or anything. So I found this and I thought, oh, that's perfect. That's so um, serendipitous. Um, so the story is about this journalist, Dom Luis Galvez, and he's um, being a bit naughty. He's with a married woman. Uh, the husband returns home and he has to leap out of the bedroom window just as the Bolivian ambassador is about to be assassinated. He lands with a clatter, saves his life, and he's then thrust into the limelight. He's embarking on this um, kind of weird... Uh, I, don't, I don't even know how you'd describe the plot, to be honest. There's like a part of the Amazon where they, they produce a lot of the rubber. They want to establish their own country there for some reason. He becomes involved in it. It all goes wrong. It's difficult to encapsulate the plot. I read it carefully. I, I couldn't really tell you how it works. But it's just a magnificent book, though. So... Uh, basically, I mean, look at this. Basically, almost every paragraph has its own little title, you know, like it's something from the 19th century or something. Um, and then the idea is that you've got to read it carefully. There'll be a little section about something. And then later, there'll be a little section that actually explains why that thing happened. And quite often, if you've really been paying attention, that later thing will make the earlier thing not just more sensible, but also hilarious. Because it's just, everything is um, very funny. Um, I honestly don't know how else to talk about this book, but to say, go and read it. It is fantastic. It's some of the most fun I've had reading a book in a long time. I wish I could delve a bit deeper into it and tell you more, but there's no way to do that without just sitting here and reading the whole thing. And this isn't the sort of channel that does that. Maybe it should be. Maybe for books like this that are hard to come by, maybe I should just sit down and read the whole thing to you. So... Part 1, November 1897 to November 1898. No, I can't do it. Read it if you can. It is fantastic. See you next time.